Okay, shalom. Right, I'm really very, very interested. I've waited a long time to try and wrap this um, particular lesson up. Completely covered in leprosy. Okay, so this is an image, and um, the actual images of leprosy, leprosy people con covered in leprosy are uh, horrific. But this is, I do believe, Lady Gaga depicting herself as being completely covered in leprosy. I thought, anyway, this is a very good image considering what what content we are going to be exploring in this lesson. Okay, so these are the overall lesson objectives of this particular lesson. Lesson objectives come, let us reason together. So first of all, before I go through the before I go through the Gematria for come let us reason together, let's just go and have a look at the specific lesson objectives that we're going to answer in this lesson um got quite a lot to get through so hopefully we'll get through it in one lesson when yeshua said the words mother behold thy son he intended for there to be a healing of the divine female was this accomplished if the healing was not accomplished as expected what was this how was this healing accomplished when Yeshua said, just as Moshe lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so too the Son of Man must be lifted up. What did he mean by this? We're going to have a look at the Gematria for, for that. It's actually very interesting. And how can the letter Aleph and Mashiach bring healing to the entire female divine aspect of creation? We've These are things that we've touched on in previous lessons. However, what, we're going to, what I want to hit the nail on the head with this lesson is the fact that um we, we're really going to go and show through the gematria how we haven't been healed and been made completely righteous and completely clean and no trace of leprosy there's two ways which we can pronounce clean okay one is if obviously any lesion whatsoever goes and the cohen examines and everything's completely gone or it's reached a, a certain stage where it's no longer considered leprosy, however, or deemed something else. However, there is a verse that is in Torah, and we've got to understand that when Yod Heh Wawi put something in the Torah, very specific, and it's linked, it's very clearly linked to the whole concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, because the whole concept, and Mashiach, because the whole concept of leprosy is. When he says about um, the coin shall be, shall look, and if the leprosy covers the entire body, because it's covered the entire body, and it's completely visible, and it can no longer be hidden. You could have a case of leprosy where you could hide it and conceal it, basically. But because it's fully exposed and fully out, and there's, it's beyond doubt whatsoever that this person is a leper, and in those days, leprosy came a lot. People were afflicted with leprosy according to the stages because they'd committed Lashon Hara. As we can see with Miriam, she, she committed Lashon Hara against Moshe. She was afflicted with, with uh, leprosy. Okay. So we've got, at this time, loads and loads of... Um, We've got, at this time, loads and loads of... Um, it's been highlighted, hasn't it? This whole defamation, lash and hara, evil tongue through this Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, Johnny Depp and Han Amber Heard case that's gone on. Um, so we're aware of this whole uh, concept of, of, of the divine female, if you like, that's represented by Miriam committing um, lash and hara against, um, you know, the divine masculine motion represented the vav however like i say there is this there is this concept where when you are completely covered from head to toe and you are no longer it's you can no longer hide the fact that you've committed lash and hara because you are completely covered then you are co also the cohen pronounces you clean okay and then there's We'll wait till we get through the lesson. So where I'm trying to go with it is to show we have not, final redemption will not come because we have cured ourselves from leprosy. Mm -hmm. we, it will come because we are, as a people, the entire of the world has committed Lashon Hara against the Moshiach, who is Yeshua. And also at the aspect of him that's, that's Moshe. But we have committed Lashon Hara because of all the people in this entire world that most people in one way or another, even ignorantly, or even thinking that you are saying something, of, 
Miriam was an extremely holy, holy, holy person. And yet she spoke against Moshe. Moses. Okay, and she was afflicted with the leprosy. Even when you have good intentions. You know, we've all been guilty of speaking against the Mashiach. We've all said things about him that defames him in some way. We've all spoken it. We've all either tried to hijack him for our own cause or, you know, we speak things about him that is simply not the truth. Okay, and we don't understand uh, the significance of him actually in our lives. And, you know, we say all kinds of things. We basically try and hit humanity over the head with the cross. Um, and then you've got other people saying things about him that's wrong. The Jewish people saying about things that about him that's wrong. The Muslims saying things about him that's wrong. Certainly the Christians, they've done a bit. They've done a good job of defaming him, de defaming him for twenty thousand, uh, two thousand years. But also, he's the only Jew of the house of Yehuda that the entire world, in one way or another, whether subconsciously or consciously, is the only one that's been lifted up and given the opportunity to defame in some way and hence cover us in leprosy just as Miriam was covered in leprosy even when we think that we have spoken in a way that is in accordance with the Torah you know to such a degree Miriam was a prophetess she's called a prophetess this is no small thing this is mean, means she's under the influence of the Ruach HaKodesh the Holy Spirit so we've got to understand and that's where I'm trying to go we're trying to get to a stage where we recognise that we did we're not going to get redeemed how we thought. We're not we didn't get healed by Yeshua how we thought. He was lifted up and we've all committed Lash and Hara and the entire of humanity as a consequence of all the lies and all the errors and all the hiddenness. Um when we the way that Yod Hewawa has hidden himself in Yeshua, the concept of Mashiach is so uh, hidden sometimes, and, and the purpose of him being lifted up and everything, it's so hidden that we have almost by default, um, as representing the divine feminine that needs rectifying, this is what I'm saying, and including all the men, we are the bride, we are the wife, uh, um, if you like, of the divine masculine, but we've all spoken against our husband. You know, and yeah, fair enough. He might not have a appeared quite as I would have hoped. And I, and I, and I really do, I, I have a sim great sympathy for Amber Heard, to be honest, because I think to myself, uh, you know, um, Johnny Depp was, I, I can't remember, I really don't know much about it, but she had she was voted to have the most perfect face um, of all the women a truly utterly beautiful person and i suppose when she thought she'd married johnny depp i think she must have thought she'd really hit the big time um but then he just proved to be this man that um you know had never bothered to sort all his problems out he expected her to sort it all out right this there's parallels here you know between the whole concept of mashiach he never got on and sorted his problems out and he saw he, when you think about the woman's most be, the world's most beautiful or perfect con, perfectly constructed face suddenly landed with the immense job of sorting out this 58 year old's trauma from his past i mean it must have been a disappointment you're not expecting to do that though are you you're not expecting to get your hands so dirty and sort out his trauma and his addictions and his this and his that and all his um thing but really that's what a wife is there to do so you can see how um to her it, it's you can see how from her perspective, you would be so disappointed by you. Th you think you you think you're married to the world's, you know, one of the world's most famous actors and this and other, and then reality hits. on. well, actually, no. You've got this massive work to do to, to correct the, you know, to correct the entire of my problems that I've just left especially for you. And this is what we've been landed with with the Mashiach. We've had to correct immense problems within humanity 
we've been left and this is no small feat these are we were immense corrections and you can understand how and and you know you you know your relationship you start off so healthy and fresh face you know I go back to when I was 20 I was 27 I was so healthy and a fresh face and I had all my life within me and this whole journey of faith has absolutely there's times where I've been in hell on earth <laughs> <laughs> absolutely face down in the dirt trying to solve trying to resolve whatever it is that's going on and um in the process you know it's very it's a real challenge it's a real challenge to stay focused even to know what we're supposed to be doing so to me i, I can understand how all of us have been like We've given this our entire youth, haven't we? We've given, we've invested our entire life in this whole process of rectification. And we've been left to do a lot of the work below. Um, and it feels like sometimes that you're just hitting your head against a brick wall. So you can understand how you, you give everything to him. Every, everything that you have, um, you, you, you give over to, to try and... Um, accomplish what you feel in your soul inspired to accomplish towards that end goal of rectifying for all of humanity all of humanity only to land up with the label of a leper and to find that oh well by the way we've all been <laughs> we've all been guilty we're all covered in le leprosy and even everybody likes it subconsciously so by the end of it you think all right okay why did your day why we then at allow this to happen why did the Mashiach come then if he came to give us just the label of being um you know defamation against us why did he set it up that way when we gave everything that we had to this cause we we invested and we we were we were re we really thought we'd hit the jackpot and yet we it's taken every last thing that we have had out of us um in order to walk this path in order to serve, in order to realise, in order to understand, in order for his life to be manifest in our own. He's taken everything. And at the end of the day, what, we're just lepers because by, by we, we've, just, we, we've just spoken against him anyway. We've defamed him anyway and we don't understand what he, who he is and what he is anyway. So we then got to ask the question, if this is what's happened, why did that happen? Why did Yodhe, why we set it up? like that for us to fail in the way that we expected to succeed okay why have we been set up to failure there must be an ultimate purpose in that failure in bringing us to a place where the entire of humanity has defamed the Mashiach who represents the name of Yod Huawei. why has this been accomplished uh, why did this get done and why has it been accomplished through Yeshua? And the only um, the only thing that I can think of, when I, when I really scrutinise it and I think about Yodhe Huawei and I think about really how wonderful, deep, you know, y y even though we've been left to do all this work, you can't escape the fact that uh, we know um, Yeshua is suffering with us in this horrendous journey that we are on. You know, every... Um, every step of the way, he is suffering with us. Yodhe Wawi is with us in this transformation, and all that we've uh, all that we've gone through. But why do the end at the end of it is all humanity defamed because we got it wrong? We spoke against Mashiach. We didn't understand what was before us. We didn't understand what our role as a wife was in this particular situation. You know, even though, like I say, like Miriam, she was such a high elevated woman that the day she died, they stopped, they, they, they didn't have the water from the rock any longer, you know, and all these things. And, and we know what the consequences of that were. So she was given the merit of the water from the rock. And that's why it's called Miriam's well. So she was obviously a very, very significant and wonderful person. So then I asked the question, why? Why did we have to go to that degree? And the only answer that I can come up with is um, level playing field, you know. 
It, cre it creates a level playing field with which we can unite. It's very difficult when we're all at different levels of righteousness, when you, we, we're able to perceive, we all think, oh, well, I'm slightly more righteous because I'm doing this particular ritual for my God and I know that this is a holy ritual because I'm part of a, a little group of people that we've decided that this is this is the correct way to serve. And, um, you know, all kinds of little things like that. We, when we're talking about in terms of righteousness, we will always get it wrong. We'll always, we'll all, our, elevating ourselves up means by, um, you know, default that you're going to put somebody else down. Because you have to measure yourself against something, don't you? Well, what do you, you can't, me what do you measure righteousness against? Well, wickedness. So, well, compared to that lot over there, compared to that lot over there, com we, we, we might appear righteous in our own eyes, but we're all, whether we like this reality or not, compared to the righteousness of yod heh wow -he, compared to the righteousness of the Mashiach, we are as nothing. You know, our righteousness is really like filthy rags. We better off, we're better off not focusing on our righteousness. That's never going to unite humanity. But one thing that could unite humanity is recognising that we're all wicked, we're all evil, we've all defamed the Mashiach in some way, and in by doing so, we've all, we've also defamed and um, desecrated the name of yod heh -Wawe, in which he came. Now, this is a level playing field. When you all recognise that we're all actually quite evil, we're all actually covered in leprosy, and um, we can get on and do the job that we're supposed to be doing that the Mashiach actually gave us to do, which he didn't give us the job to make ourselves self-righteous. He asked us to be with the poorest, hungriest, um, loneliest, sickest people, imprisoned people, and that's where he asked us to be. And then once we all realise we've got leprosy, we don't need to have any barriers there that makes us think, oh, you know, because we're slightly better than that person over there, we can keep away from that person. No, you can think, right, now Now you know that we've all got leprosy, we're all a level playing field, nobody's more righteous than other. In fact, if you want to be, if you want to, um, you know, consider yourself more righteous, you're just one little patch on the whole human body that thinks and com convinced you're totally righteous that's what the br the flesh is brought back to life and then you're declared a leper all over again so we might as well have the level playing field as long as we all know that we're all guilty and that we're all um we're, we're all we've we've leveled the playing field or we're all united as one man all humanity then we we're ready we clean and like you say we can get on and do the work that we were supposed to do that brings unity between um heaven and earth in fact the work that establishes heaven on the on earth you know we can get on with that so i've put there is there any connection to lash and hara evil tongue and the egyptian tongue all right so this is another question yeah there is there is there is a connection between lash and hara evil evil tongue and the Egyptian tongue. We will get round to some superb gamacha regarding that. I've had to really just speak up front because I've actually attempted to say what I've just said in this um, introduction many times during the previous lessons and I've never actually got to it. If it's for some reason, I've gone on and de de it's drawn me in different ways. So I thought, you better get on and say it up front and then sh back it up with what you've got to put. Cause it, and then instead of going on a journey and never getting to the place, I thought, no, get to the destination. Tell them exactly where, what destination we've reached and then explain it through the gematria afterwards. Because for some reason... Um, I, I, I've, 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 tried, I've tried it in so many lessons to hit the nail on the head and it's just, I thought, well, I, I, I really didn't reach that again. I'll have to do another lesson now. So I've brought the stuff all together in this lesson. So is there any connection to Lash and Hara, Evil Tongue and the Egyptian Tongue? This is very interesting. This is weaving some wonderful concepts from the Torah and the Zohar and the Talmud and New Testament all together as one, just as it should be done.
Why is the first word of the Ten Commandments connected to Yeshua being lifted up and the Egyptian language that must be rectified? Okay, so all these are mystical levels of teaching and as we've seen in the previous lessons, it's the mystical spiritual level of teaching, the Torah interpretation that must infuse the letter here, which is representing the divine female, the divine female that is totally covered in leprosy. As we got that image of Lady Gaga, present it in herself as somebody with, covered in leprosy, white as snow, etc. It is the secret te teachings that ultimately bring about a healing. And that's all connected to Yeshua being on the cross and saying, Mother, behold thy son. And then telling the disciples to behold the mother. Okay. It's complicated stuff. I hope I've... I, ho I, I wanted to just go through that, though, before we started. So... Um, we've uh, covered it and then we need we can see where we're building towards that's basically what i've these last few lessons about the divine female and stuff like that that's where i've been heading to just say that what i've said now there's a whole load of gematria i've got thousands and thousands of pages of um analysis that i've woven together for this particular lesson i can't possibly go through every single um thing because i would never get to the end of it every every single piece of evidence what i've tried to put through is some quite extensive concepts and some wonderful gematria that sort of highlights what i've just said but that's certainly what the scripture reveals and it's certain certainly conceptually um we can all understand it and you know the fact that this whole world seems to be have occupied of late with this whole defamation case, um, a wife against a husband, etc. That's basically what, um, you know, when you start to see in the world things like that pushed under your nose, you've got to take notice and think what could be the hidden significant message in this. Because everything that happens is by divine providence. So the fact that we've had this massive defamation case to consider of late, um, the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, and the result that came out of it, um, it, we've just got to learn something from that. We've got to say, well, what hidden message could we really... You know, when your day while we start to do major things where everybody's paying attention to it, and it's a major case, it's been on the news and everything... Um, what what could you have what hidden in that what wisdom could we glean from it so this is not about johnny depp and amber heard by the way <laughs> it's just it's just something there that we can look at and think in terms of defamation against the mashiach himself you know so Oh, lesson objectives. These are the ones we, we these. This is the target we want to hit in this particular lesson. These are the overall targets. Okay, come now. Let us debate. Says the Lord. We're looking at this hundred and sixty-four. Yeshua Sahapanim, Yeshua Prince of the Faces. It's got a mispagadol ordinal of hundred and sixty-four. So we are revealing Yeshua Sahapanim. Yeshua Sahapanim is, um, it's. It represents basically the face of Yote Wauhe. We can't obviously perceive the actual face of Yote Wauhe. Uh, you know, if we did, did that, we would die. But he does have a representation of him that we are supposed to be able to peer at and perceive Yote Wauhe. And it's the face of Yeshua Sahapanim, Prince of the Faces. He really represents to us the face of Yote Wauhe. Okay, and I've done teachings about Yeshua Sahabanim. He's a very highly um, mystical and secret, yet wonderful uh, understanding to, to be able to comprehend this concept, Yeshua Sahabanim. One, six, four. Snakes, vipers and scorpions. So this is the place where the Torah was given. There's a whole piece of uh, information in the um Zohar that explain it goes why was the Torah given in a place of snakes, vipers and scorpions, hence in the desert Sinai wilderness. Why was it given in that place? And there's significant reasons for it because it's only in there where you can actually learn the Torah. You know, it's like our situation that we've been through as believers in Yeshua or as not believers in Yeshua, you know, 
when Yeshua was brought into the world and revealed in the world, um, our whole relationship towards that, if we're the ones that are, um, uh, you know, married to him, for example, we are his bride, um, it's not been easy. <laughs> but it's like the Zohar says, it's only in that situation of great testing that you really know the Torah truly. You know, and it's only when you've been through this desert wandering in your belief do you truly, truly know who Yeshua the Mashiach is. You, you, you know, you've got to go through so many transitions, so many different destinations. You think you've arrived and it's only to be moved on, uh, you know, within days often. You, may, you reach a major destination and you've just travelled around a lot. And it's really not how you expected it to be and things like this. And you've got to have a tremendous amount of faith. And uh, it really is testing. But that place of testing really does prove you. You know, and you just have to be found faithful right to the end. 1,316, by the way, is the word Vayikra. In t sorry, not it's not Vay it's Vayikra in Torah. And that's the opening of the book, the first word of the book of Leviticus. And um, it's got a little Aleph. I've talked about this quite a lot. That represents the Mashiach. It represents Moshe. It's little and diminished at this point. It's humbled on account of the fact that the concept of Mashiach has had to go into exile for us to reveal the truth. You know, instead of defaming him <laughs> like what we have done, to reveal the truth of what yod heh -Wow has accomplished. Um, through the Mashiach to reveal that letter Aleph that there's only Yod Hewawe and nothing else beside him. Okay. And when we the word Vayikra comes to three hundred and seventeen, okay, so there's a little Aleph in that, the Aleph is one. So if you take the little Aleph off and put the big Aleph on, it comes to one thousand three hundred and sixteen. This number here, this is the number of the Vayikra spelt with a big Aleph. And eventually when the when the Mashiach is fully revealed, it's, it's called the Aleph Gadol. It's, it's a thousand, not this diminished tiny little one. Okay, so that's the value of the big um, the Vayikra, um, the opening of the book. Levit to Leviticus that represents Moshe, the Mashiach of yod heh wow -He, it gets transformed into 1,316. Not only that, 1,000 is the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, 566, plus Mashiach ben Dawid, 434, that comes to 1,000. And then 316 is Yeshu. That's the derogatory way that Yeshua has been defamed whilst we have been in this 2,000 year exile trying to figure out the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef. Okay, and the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef is simply be kind. Be kind to, uh, you know, it's it's the level playing field, basically. That's his entire Torah. His entire Torah is to bring us to a place where we do not consider ourselves better than another. We consider that the other person that's in str that's struggling is a part of our own soul and it's we should feel love towards that other person to the point where we are prepared to help them and to sacrifice some something of our own lives towards helping that person however poor and degraded they are because you know we've been shown through Yeshua that yod heh -Wow -He loves the entire of humanity and he's suffering with the entire of humanity but it takes us a long time to get on board with that we got to stay in the desert wandering with the snakes and vipers and scorpions for quite a considerable time until we finally realised, let's just get on and do what we were supposed to be doing. <coughs> Instead of building temples to worship our own holiness and righteousness. The mother of all living 109, soul level of David, Eve fully rectified. So, im kol choi. It's the level... That we're trying to attain, isn't it? It's the rectified Eve, the rectified Chaya. Um, that's her name, rectified. She's called Chava at the moment, Eve. She will be transformed into Chaya. 
and that will be done through it's all it's all coded i go through this all the time but this is the mother of all living it's the rectified divine feminine female it's the soul level of king david and it's eve fully rectified so 109 or regular 55 ordinary 164 we get that we get into all this okay you shall give truth to yakov the miss pagadol ordinal comes to 164 what truth? The truth, Od Yosef Chai. Yosef is still alive. Okay? The soul of Mashiach ben Yosef that came to level the playing field, that came to unite all humanity together as one new man, is alive. His mission is alive. His purpose is alive. That that he came for is very much alive. Okay, we he, he hasn't been defeated. In fact, the fact the fact that we thought we he, he has been defeated is part of the victory itself. Okay, we have been given his Torah amongst snakes and vipers and scorpions for the last two thousand years, and yet he lives. His Torah lives. His light lives. Okay, you shall give truth to Yaakov. And that's the truth that we give over Od Yosef Chai. Yosef is still alive. Despite the fact that we've done everything contrary, um, that message is that light is still alive. Um, and even though it's been dressed up in Edomite exile and it uh, looks very much di disconnected from the Hebrew roots and it looks like we've done everything to defame uh, you know, Yeshua, it does not matter. He still lives. His light still lives. And there you got it. Look, you shall give truth to Yaakov. If we add the regular and the ordinary, it comes to 1,656, eight times, or light. So that was a very extensive introduction, I might say. Um, we might not get through all that I intended for us to get through, but um, at least I've said what I wanted to say up front. So all rights is all guilty. When we're talking about this concept of completely covering leprosy, therefore clean, um, that's to be found, I think it's Leviticus 13.13. 13. Um, it's certainly in, in, in and around there. I can't remember just offhand, but I think it's Leviticus 13.13. 13. But this is taken from the Talmud, all righteous, all guilty, Sanhedrin 98a. This is this this is the part of the Talmud that talks very extensively about the concept of Mashiach. So in there we've got kings shall see and arise, princes princes shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. That's from Isaiah 49 7, indicating that redemption will come independent of repentance. Okay, so what does that mean? It means graciously, by the way. <laughs> it means that even if we don't fully repent, and even if we do not fully, um, that basically means we don't fully rectify every problem humanity has ever faced, it will come anyway. Okay? Because um, it will come because of Yote Wawe, because he desires it to come, redemption to come. And, and his will cannot be defeated even by our evil and even by our lack of not being able to fully comprehend the Mashiach. There is nothing that can defeat the will of Yod Hewaweh. There is simply nothing that can do uh, def defeat that will. His will will happen no matter what. A Rabbi Yochan, and Rabbi Yochanan says, The son of David will come only in a generation that is entirely innocent. <laughs> In which case, they will be deserving of redemption or in a generation that is entirely guilty. In which case, there will be no alternative to redemption. He may come in a generation that is entirely innocent, as it is written, and your people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. So that's Isaiah 60, 21. So he may come in a generation that is entirely guilty, as is written, and he saw that there was no man and was astonished that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation to him and his righteousness, it sustained him, Isaiah fifty nine sixteen, And it is written, so this is all for the side of we'll all be guilty, i.e. we'll all have leprosy. 
level the playing field. We're not all going to be righteous. Forget about it. It's not going to happen. We haven't got time for that to happen. The only time is we've got the only thing that we, the only reality and hope that we've got is to accept we are all guilty. We are all guilty of defamation against the Mashiach. Okay, and it's as simple as that. We have defamed him in some way because we haven't understood the concept of the Mashiach truly. We haven't. And it is written for my own sake. For my own sake will I do it. For how should it be profaned? And my glory I will not give to another. Isaiah 48, 11. So again, this is siding on the um, side of we'll, we, the redemption will become come whilst we're all, we're all guilty. Because for my own sake, for my own sake will I do it. For how should it be preferred? So Yode Wawe desires for there to be redemption. It will happen as a consequence of his will. So this is that concept that I've talked about, the Aleph Gadol. I just wanted to put this up so that you understand how the concept of Mashiach being lifted up as a serpent on the cross. And through that, somehow we've got it all jumbled up what is actually before us. We've seen the serpent and we've, um, you know, we've had our serpent tongues against the Mashiach. And because we've seen him in the form of a serpent, i.e. We've, we've seen him through defective knowledge, where our knowledge has not been sufficient. And because our knowledge is not sufficient of the Mashiach, we, we, he, he's presented as a serpent in some way. Okay? What do we mean by that? Even if we, have, we think we've got the perfect image of the perfect Jesus on the cross... Um, you know, if our knowledge is defective, and it is because the whole part, the whole fall of Adam is the fall of our knowledge, our de'af, into our flesh. So we're not able to fully comprehend things at the level that we should be able to intellectually and with full awareness because our knowledge has fallen to such a low place and it's become debased. We are not able to comprehend the concept of Mashiach, and then therefore we're not able to fully comprehend the name yod heh wow -Heh through that concept. It's all related to the Aleph, it's related to the serpent on the cross that looks like an Aleph, it's related to the Aleph Gadol, which means the big Aleph, the whole concept of the Mashiach. So this is something that I put together. So that's the serpent on a staff. Right, okay, so we're not used to seeing an image of it like this, but I just did it like this because um, as it, I felt very inspired to do it. Obviously, the snake would be somehow wrapped. This doesn't look exactly like a letter, the letter Aleph, because um, that should be slightly, the tail bit should be up. But if you imagined it, the coils of the snake wrapped around the, um, the staff a little bit to bring us a bit of a separation between the lower yud and the upper yud uh, sorry the lower yud and the upper yud of the letter aleph but this is the serpent on the staff we talk about yeshua was lifted up and um at that point he says mother behold thy son what he was really trying to do was get her to be healed of her deficiency um a deficiency rep she represents the entire divine feminine the letter here he represent the divine masculine, the letter Vav. And um, he was really trying to rectify the entire of um, the divine feminine. But like I say, this rectification, this healing, he became the serpent on the cross, the serpent on the staff. We know that that is for a healing. So people are healed from the snake bite. Um, but what actually happened, just as what when Miriam talked against Moshe, it didn't come. She talked about him. She ended up with leprosy. She was actually healed of leprosy. But my argument is in the bigger picture, um, we haven't been healed. Because we're not as righteous as uh, Miriam uh, for a start. And um, But it's become a level playing field. Um, but our healing has come in a different way. Like I say, our healing has come because we've been completely covered in leprosy. And another thing I wanted to point out is you got to understand when yod heh wah -Wah puts something in the Holy Torah, it will definitely be fulfilled. It, it will be fulfilled microcosmically. 
this could happen in an individual's life but when it comes to the laws of leprosy that are so linked to the concept of Mashiach these verses take on an extraordinary macrocosmic level dimension because the Mashiach is macrocosmic as well as microcosmic, i.e. affects us in our life. But if we detach that from the macrocosm, the big version of everything, um, we will have made the mis- we will have um, caused a separation. We've got to see the little in the big picture. So when you have a verse in the Torah that mentions that, when you are completely covered in leprosy, you are de- declared clean we have to understand when that is so linked to the concept of Mashiach that really defines that unity between macrocosm and microcosm to the greatest degree that is possible when we see a Torah verse that tells us if we are covered in leprosy we will be declared clean we need to know that yod he wow he put it there to fulfill it in the macrocosmic way it's not like put in just for our entertainment so we know a little bit about the laws of of um leprosy the the big 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 picture involved we will see it actually manifest macrocosmically and that is exactly what has happened and that is what we have got as a guarantee the torah itself it wouldn't have included such a bizarre statement, such a it's it's there's no way of comprehending it at all other than it being um a, a, like a mystery. Why would somebody completely covered in leprosy be called clean? It it it's it, it's it goes against any uh, rationality at all. Yod he where we has put that in to be fulfilled macrocosmically. And that is exactly what has happened. Okay. So you've got to bear in mind this whole concept of the letter Aleph. And the concept of Mashiach. And transforming it. You see, what do you see here? Do you see a serpent and a staff duality? Why? When you're looking at the serpent and the staff is the duality. Because there's two things. There's a serpent and a staff. This is all concept of reward and punishment, isn't it? Oh, if I do this, I'll I'll get rewarded. Then you've got like the rod of Elohim helping you in life. But if I do bad, I'll get bitten. And then this is the serpent, isn't it? That bites us. And somehow then we've got to have the serpent lifted up to heal us. And it goes on like this. And all these are very significant things. But what do you see when you see this? You see two things. You see a staff and you see a serpent. You don't see one unity. You don't see the Aleph. You see a serpent and a staff. And that's the whole um, contradiction that we have got to overcome. We have got to be able to perceive that there is only yod he wow and nothing else beside him. And we are tested to the absolute point, break point with this matter. We see duality. We see two separate things. We don't see the unity. We see a serpent on a cross, a serpent on a staff. And we don't we, we don't we can't see the absolute utter oneness of your day while we're in this situation. We still remain eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is good, this is evil, this is good. This is even we're perpetually caught up in this cycle of judgment. Even when we're looking at the serpent on the cross, we're seeing, oh, we are good because we're saved. We know we are born again. It just goes on. You're perpetual with with the duality. You've got to see the unity that there's only yod he wawi and nothing else beside him. And the concept of the Mashiach should not lead us to a state of um, desecrating the holy name of yod he wawi Okay? It should lead us to a state where we are uniting the letters of the name yod he wawi together as one. The Mashiach has the power to do this. But only when we mature enough to see him for what he is, okay, is a revelation of the name Yod-Heh-Wow-Heh. 
manifestation of his unity that he desires to bestow upon or upon us. Anyway, so let's the Aleph is however broken into three aspects. The upper Yod wisdom Tifereth, that's Moshe. Then we've got the Vav Yesod, which is Yeshua, foundation, Yosef, Yesod is Yosef, Tifereth is Yaakov, Moshe was an incarnation of Yaakov, according to the sages. And then the lower Yod, Wisdom Malkuth, this would be Mashiach Ben Dawid. Okay, and we can see it's a letter Yod tipped up. There's got to be these three elements united together as one, Moshe, Yeshua, Mashiach Ben Dawid, the Tifereth, Yesod, Malkuth. Tifereth heaven, Yesod the pillar between heaven and earth, or the ladder between heaven and earth, and Malkuth the kingdom that must be established on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Okay? But there's an upper... I've come across this image before and I've talked about it. I came across it first with Ariel Cohen Alaro, but a very similar image is on another rabbi that I have previously listened to a lot, Rabbi um, Alon uh, Anava. He's got a slightly different image. I think he's Aleph somewhere over here. But, oops, just let's go back. You need to get these images in because obviously this is Tifereth, Yesod, Malkuth. But the letter Aleph, as it appears in this world, the unity of the Vav and um, the hair that we are responsible to bring in unity through the work that we do. I.e., like I say, we should be feeding the hungry. This brings unity between heaven and earth. It 100% fulfilling the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef brings unity between heaven and earth. It 100% does. So feeding the hungry, you know, it, the, the dejected, those people that don't believe what you believe, you know, those idol worshippers as you would deem them, you know, getting over yourself because we've all got leprosy and just getting on and doing whatever you're capable of doing to bring some comfort and peace to anybody in humanity that you're able to bring comfort and peace to. As long as you act like... Um, What's the word that he get? What's the wisdom that he gave us? Be I'm sending you out among the wolves. Be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. As long as you don't um, put yourself at risk, we should be helping people. Okay. However, this lower reality that we are rectifying through Yeshua, uh, through Yesod, uh, the, the the light of Mashiach Ben Yosef. Okay, and the Jews, Jewish people recognise that in a different, slightly different way than what we do. They certainly don't associate the light of Mashiach ben Yosef with Yeshua. But like I've said before, there's two camps. When we go up against Esau, there's two camps. And from the camp of Yosef, it's Yeshua. Okay. Um, this is the upper, however, isn't it? So this would be Bina. And um, this would be Da'ath, and then this would be Wisdom, Hochma. So we would have Hochma, Da'ath, which is the the um, synthesis between Wisdom and Understanding. This is the upper male and female, sorry, the upper divine male and female. So you've got Wisdom, the Yod, and then the upper hair, and then you've got the Vav, and the Vav basically is just an extended Yod. And then um, the lower hair there. So it's 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 the name Yod Hair Wahweh basically, isn't it? But it's connected and one with it's the upper aspect of the Aleph is completely um you know um one with the lower. So we've got the upper yod and 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 brought together with Da'ath. Supernal Da'ath, and then Bina, and then Bina connects with Tifereth. So this is your upper hair, the of the name Yod Hey Wei Wei, Wei connects with Tifereth, that connects with Yesad, Od Yosef Chai, needs the truth, give truth to Yaakov, and then that brings the, this is how all that abundance comes down. It's got to be all thoroughly established in that order. So you've got to have unity below exactly imitating the unity that we are able to perceive above, the unity that's represented by the Yod and He of the name Yod He Wawe, 
in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, we are a mirror image of what is already in heaven. The unity between the letters yod he, we have got to create that same unity between the vav and the he. Okay? With our yesod that is parallel to de'ath. That's 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 where we're going. So we really wanting to um, unite the entire name Yod Hey with Wow Hey, and that's what we've got to do the work down here to imitate what is above here. Got to get to that unity. That's what I'm trying to press for. And see how it's connected to the whole concept of his name. It's all, there's only his name, nothing else beside. Every last thing that we think, say and do in this world below is, is all a part of his holy name. Okay, We've just got to reveal his holy name as opposed to concealing it. Right, so anyway, let's get up to this. Why did we ever end up with the serpent on the staff anyway? They journeyed from Mount Hor, by the way, the Red Sea, to the circle, to circle the land of Edom. Very important because we're in Edomite exile. We're trying to overcome the powers of our imagination, the powers of our evil inclination that would tell us that there is something other than yod hey wow hey, and that Yosef is not alive. You know, something that's other than your Tewawe and this whole light of Mashiach Ben Dawid, sorry, Mashiach Ben Yosef, that would take us to a place where we're showing love to the world, that's gone from us because we're in Edomite exile. So instead we've got duality. We are righteous, they are evil. Whatever way that comes into our imagination, that it's it's completely and totally it's a total delusion. You've got to overcome it because we, our purpose is not to proclaim our own righteousness. Our purpose is to bring humanity to a place of unity. But we have got the forces of Edom that we battle with that prev that create duality. The that is fueled by our imagination because we're reading the Torah and it's we're reading it from the wrong perspective. We're reading it because we're like little serpents that only see things through our own immature serpent-like perspective, crawling about in the belly of crawling about on our bellies during exile, and we see things from a serpent perspective. And from that perspective, we will see. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's evil. We'll be perpetually eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's a test, okay. It's a test. We've be, we've entered into the land of Edom, and it's a test. What are we gonna see? The letter Ali for duality for and for how long? Well, you've got that serpent on the cross to look at until you until you're healed, and we've got to get to that place where we're healed. But like I say, it's not come in the way that we expected it. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this desert? If there is no bread and no water, and we are disgusted with this rotten bread, i.e. the rotten bread, that is the bread from heaven. That is Yeshua. That is the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef. Disgusted with that. The Lord sent against the people the venomous snakes, and they bit the people, and many people of Israel died. And Moshe and the people came to Moshe and said, We have we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Torah. Sorry, we have spoken against Yod Hey Wahweh and against you. Pray to Yod Hey Wahweh that he remove the snakes from us. So Moshe, Moshe prayed on behalf of the people. Yod Hey Wahweh said to Moshe, Make yourself a serpent and put it on the pole, and let whoever is bitten look at it and live. Moshe made a copper snake and put it on a pole and whenever a snake bit a man he would gaze upon the copper snake and live. Okay, so we've got to see the reason why we've spoken, we, we've got this problem is because we spoke against that rotten bread. We thought the bread was rotten, i.e. the teaching of Mashiach ben Yosef. So at the end of the day, we've got a problem and we'll, what, what happened with this serpent that was there to heal us from talking about this bread, defaming the bread from heaven, defaming the... Um, concept of the Mashiach that would bring healing um, yeah, uh, ultimately another problem was indicated um, in Ezekiah's time the people just then started instead of going to that place where they could see the unity and oneness of yod heh -Wah with the absolute authority of him they went and worshipped the serpent on the staff 
to the point where Ezekiah had to um, get rid of it. So that that should have brought easy healing, i.e. when you see the serpent and you see the staff and then you get it, all oh, right, I see, I really should be seeing an Aleph, I should be seeing unity, I should be doing unity. I've been speaking against this particular bread and causing myself to enter into states of duality where I see a serpent and a staff, where I really should just see the letter Aleph, I should just see there's Yod here while we're nothing else beside him. He's provided us with this bread for an ultimate absolute good. We don't need to speak about it, we simply need to trust in that oneness. Um, but instead of reaching that place, it, we, sh we didn't learn the lesson from the serpent and the staff. What we did was we just worshipped the serpent and the staff. We, 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 create, we just perpetuated duality. We just per per perpetuated the concept of there being evil and good. We didn't use that whole situation. That's why Ezekiah had to... Um, get rid of it because the actual serpent and the staff became an idol and the children of Israel worshipped this idol that was called the Nehushtan is a copper thing but it's also taken from the word Nehash which means serpent okay so we didn't get we didn't reach the place we should have reached it's as an example here just like I'm saying when Yeshua says mother behold thy son we didn't, we, the, the whole of humanity wasn't healed in the way that we expected it to be healed. This journey did not evolve in the way that we thought it would evolve. Uh, you know, but it's led us on a journey that you'd hear while we knew it would take us on for the ultimate good that will ultimately be revealed even through our own deficiencies. Okay, so that's the place where we've, we've been going um, and that's how it's all linked to the concept of been completely covered in leprosy and it's only when we reach that place where we're completely covered in leprosy do we get completely clean as a consequence and there's only one man in the entire history that has accomplished this for the entire of humanity because there's only one person that everybody in this world has defamed to some degree even like i say subconsciously and that is yeshua He's been defamed in every way possible by the Jews, by the Muslims, by the Christians prior morally. But then everybody else in the world has got something to say about Yeshua. And he's the only person in the entire world throughout this entire Edomite history of 2,000 years that everybody has spoken against in some way. And that we've all as a consequence been covered in this leprosy. And we will all, as a consequence, because we've all spoken about him in such wicked ways. In, we've defamed him and we've defamed the name yod heh wah -Wi that should have been revealed in unity through him. And because of that, because we still stand on the... Um, in, in judgment, you know, he, sh he should have been brought us to a place of love and joy. It didn't occur, or it might have occurred temporarily, and then we fall back to our ways that we've we our previous ways and we sometimes even worse so he's the only person that's accomplished that but through that we are all made clean we've all been given a level playing field we either accept that or we turn from it um but we certainly can't be making an an idol out of it like what has occurred is very evident that people have started to worship the serpent on the cross without even knowing what it's actually accomplished or understanding the whole message in it. That it's there to bring unity between the name yod -Heh and wow -Heh, not separation, not elitism and not judgment, um, but unity. And so one way or another, that unity will be accomplished. It didn't get accomplished through making everybody righteous. It's got th accomplished through making everybody guilty. And that is why, like I say, it's written in the Torah that um, this verse containing the, the leprosy, the one that's covered completely in leprosy, will is clean. Because this bizarre instruction that's given to us must be fulfilled. Because the verses of leprosy are the most messianic verses in the entire Torah. We know that from the sages. Um, because he, in the Talmud it's written all the sages say that he is a leper from the house of Rabbi Yehuda and Nisi. Um and that's that's something that I've talked about a lot 
they're really saying go look at the verses of Torah that are about leprosy and there you will find Mashiach and when you look in the verses of the Torah about leprosy it's in there all everything in there is pointing to Yeshua being the Mashiach and and even like the numerical value of Hu Tzaharath it is leprosy comes to 772 which is two times Yeshua it's everywhere the whole concept of Mashiach ben Yosef the whole concept of the suffering surf, servant everything is pointing to that uh, Mashiach being Yeshua and, it, and it's very difficult to escape that okay so this next bit is Miriam with the leprosy so we've got three incidents three main incidents somewhere in the Torah which taught which are about evil tongue defamation uh, what's called Lashon Hara, evil tongue. So this is the point where Miriam speaks against Moshe and she ends up with leprosy. Okay, so Miriam represents the last letter here of the name yod heh wow -Hey, the divine feminine. Um, and the, like even the concept of the bride of Yeshua. Okay, it's all, that's why his mother was called Miriam. It's all connected. It, it's really representing the whole of humanity. But we are classed, the whole of humanity in a way is classed as a div, part of the divine feminine of the name yod heh wow -we, what's called the Holy Shekhinah, what's called the Kingdom, Malkuth. It's all in the feminine and we have got to fill up and unite with the masculine that is represented by Yeshua. Okay, so Miriam and leprosy. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moshe regarding the Cushite woman he had married for. He had married a Cushite woman. This is, in the sages say it was Zipporah, but there's Midrashim that says, she, no, he actually married a Cushite woman, a Cushite queen, in fact. They said, has the Lord, has yod heh -Wah we spoken only to Moshe? Hasn't he spoken to us too? I've included all the verses in this simply because I've not done it in order. <laughs> so I don't think this is in order. Um, and I always take the verses off like this and just tell you, but in this instance, it's Numbers 12. Numbers 12, the entire verse, uh, sorry, the entire chapter, is all about this incident with Miriam speaking against uh, Moshe, Numbers 12. So they said, as yod -Heh -Wah -Wah spoken only to Moshe, hasn't he spoken to us? And yod -Heh -Wah -Wah heard, the wrath of yod -Heh -Wah -Wah fled against him and he left. The cloud departed from above the tent and behold, Miriam was afflicted with Zaharath as white as snow. Then Aaron turned to Miriam, and behold, she was afflicted with Zaharath. Aaron said to Moshe, Please, Master, do not put sin upon us for acting foolishly and for sinning. Let her not be like the dead which comes out of his mother's womb with half his flesh consumed. Moshe cried out to Yote Wawe, saying, I beseech you, God, please heal her. And that is a very powerful meditation within Judaism. Say it at the end of, um, say it during Shabbat. Um, El na rafa na la. Um, please, God, heal her now. Or here, I beseech you. El na is God, please. That na is please. Rafa na la. Um, please God, please heal her. So um, she was healed, wasn't she? So let's see how this ties into this whole concept in um, John three fourteen. It says, "Just as Moshe lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up." And this comes to these numbers. We'll go through some of them. But look at the overall number. The regular of it is 19 times 157. So 19 is Chava, which is Eve unrectified, multiplied by the entire concept of the Nukva, which is, that's the name given for the Divine Feminine. So you've got the unrectified Divine Feminine multiplied by the entire concept of the Nukva, Nukva means whole, okay? So when you talk about the divine feminine, there's the there's a male aspect, zakor, like he said he made the male and female, it's zakor were nukva. So you've got the divine feminine, which basically means the whole, and obviously you can, you can use your imagination what the male aspect of divinity represents. So when you've got this word nukva, that's the word for female, as, he, as in he made 
he, he made them male and fe male and female he made them um you know as what we find in genesis the word there is nukva so we've got the whole concept of the divine female which we are all a part of all human entities are part of that like i say when we're below down here and uh, yote wawe is above or the yeshua who represents him is above he's the um you know that's what we've got to have unity between yod he wow he and below and that pillar between heaven and earth is yeshua okay yet yeah, what's called yesod it's the foundation of the wor world the righteousness of the world is called yes of yes and that's linked to yosef that's why we call mashiach uh, yeshua mashiach ben yosef so you've got the name yod he wow he you've got us below which is the divine fem female okay and then you've got the name of Yote Wauhe, which represents heaven. And heaven has got to come down to earth. I.e. there's got to be a union between male and female. And that is accomplished through Yeshua. Okay, who is Yesod, or the pillar between heaven and earth. The problem with Eve, why she was unrectified, according to what the sages say, she wanted to go on top. Okay, use your imagination to figure that one out. But Chava wanted to go on top, i.e. she wanted to dominate. And it was not the right order. The right order is the, the man was on top. Then there's the, um, obviously, the what brings a man and a woman together. And then the woman below, that's the natural order. So Nukva is Malkuth. It's the kingdom below that must be established and purified and everything else in order to res in order to unify with heaven which is the name yod he wow -he. we do that through the concept of yesod which is mashiach ben yosef the light of mashiach ben yosef and that brings eve to full rectification she and her name then will get changed from chava to chaya which means the living one or the mother of our living which is what we've just gone through so there's some incredible numbers in all this let's go and have a look first of all right this is so important it's this word anachi anachi so it means i i am and there's three verses in the entire of the tanakh which as a repetition of this word anachi anachi okay all these are so significant this is all linked linked to yourself um but I, I mentioned about at the beginning this word how is lashon hara which is called evil tongue related to the whole concept of the ten giving of the ten commandments and um, the egyptian tongue that was part of the lesson objectives right let's go and have a look because this understanding this word and the key and the key is so significant now let's just look as you can see the square order of it is 836 which is two times 418 so we know anarchy is 418 which is exactly the same ordinal as this verse just as Moshe lifted up the snake in the wilderness so the son of man must be lifted up so we know that word anarchy is very very important when it comes to why was Yeshua lifted up like the serpent in the wilderness okay when it comes to unity what kind of unity does that mean very interesting teaching here you can actually get it online at chabad.org the rebbe and this is the if you wanted to go on if you search for shavuot the egyptian word and the he because actually the word and the he i am is not hebrew it's egyptian why did yote wawe begin the commandments with an egyptian word and also there's this is related to that the letter aleph because the beginning of the word the book of torah starts with the beth which is a house that's the that represents the divine female doesn't it she's the house that must be built for the husband okay but the ten commandments were started with an aleph you know when it came to the commandments they commenced with an aleph so this is compensation for the letter Aleph. Really, the Torah should have started with the letter Aleph, okay? And it wasn't. It was started with the Beth. However, the commandments were started with an Aleph. Anachi, the word Anachi. So why was that then an Egyptian word? And what can we learn from that? There's all kinds of mysteries involved in this. It says, in, comment in, commentating, in commenting sorry, on the words, I am Anachi, the... 
Yote Wawa Yo Elohim, the opening words of the Ten Commandments, the Midrash states, the word Anachi is of Egyptian origin. Being the first word of the first commandment itself, Anachi encompasses the entire Torah. Moreover, Anachi, I am, refers to God's very essence, something that cannot be alluded to by any name or intimation. Okay, so we're talking about powerful concepts here. Why is that related to the John? Is why is that got exactly the same number? The square ordinal of Anachi is exactly the same ordinal value of that entire verse within John for John three fourteen. You've got to start making some connections because these are not small connections. How is it then possible for the word Anachi to be of Egyptian origin? How can it be possible that the degrees of manifest godliness that can be alluded to by the names Yod He Wow He Havaya? And, you, and God, Elohecha, this is obviously how Jewish people um, say, your God, Elohecha, it, it's Elohecha, they say. So I've taken this off this particular sign. Are of the holy tongue, while Anachi, the word that denotes God's essence, is of Egyptian origin. The question becomes even greater when one bears in mind that the 70 languages of mankind are divided into various categories by quality and rank, with Egyptian being the lowest order, since Egyptian was the abomination of the earth. How then can it be written that when the Torah required a word to express God's essence, the Torah used an Egyptian word? God desired that beginning with the first word he uttered at Matan Torah. Matan Torah means the giving of the Torah. That's where you get the word Matthew from, Matan. There immediately be known the purpose of his giving the Torah. He accomplished this by using the word Anachi. The revelation of Anachi, of God's essence, was actually for the sake of the Egyptian tongue. That is to say, the ultimate intent of the giving of the Torah, Matan Torah, was to draw down holiness not only to the holy tongue, but to the other languages as well, even into Egyptian. So how, why is that related to Yeshua then? Because the message of the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef should have gone out into every nation. Only through his message can all humanity be, all the nations and everybody be united as one. It's through the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef. Okay, the Torah that was given through Yeshua. Okay, so that has to go, and that's why it's linked to this whole concept. And that's why this all happened in the wilderness, the places of snakes and scorpions and vipers. And um, it's all connected because we've got to take this message to the very lowest places on earth. It's, it's like I've said before, Moshe wrestled with the angels to get the Torah out of heaven, to bring it down to us who needed it down here. And compared to the angels, we're as nothing. Okay. But we needed that wisdom here. We needed it. And it's like it says, it is not in heaven. So by the same measure, all these people who, you know, cling to their Torah and keep it hidden from the people who need it the most are making a big mistake because it's very clear that the fact that yod heh wah we use as the first word of the Ten Commandments, an Egyptian word, is telling you this Torah is not to be kept hidden it's got to go out and illuminate the entire of humanity to the very slow to the very slowest place even to the egyptian tongue who's considered as how did they word it now the abomination of the earth okay let's have a look at this again it says as long as one does not descend to egypt to merely occupies himself with torah and prayer i.e the holy tongue for his own purpose and no matter how lofty his service may be one can only attain the, that limited level of divine revelation that is symbolized by god's names okay so we know how powerful god's names are it says however by serving god elohim only in a rational manner we are only capable of connecting and receiving from elohecha your God, the divine name, name Elohim, which refers to godliness that is contracted within intellect and nature. So there's two main names of there's two main names. There's the Yote Wawe and then there's the name Elohim. Most people really connect to the name Elohim. It's limited to their understanding of who they think God is through the religion that they've inherited. Okay? And what they what they 
Um, even Pharaoh knew Elohim, didn't he? It was, it, it, it was like, you'd hear, wow, who's he? I ain't heard of him. And that's the kind of mentality. When we're in a restricted consciousness where we're not prepared to open our eyes to see the glory of your hey wow this is actually the knowledge of your hey wow is filled in this entire earth then we will be understanding in a very constricted way so oh, only we need to go to this church and be around these people or we need to go to this mosque or this synagogue and you know the and that's very limited understanding because we've got to be able to see your hey wow in the entire his, his glory's got to fill the entire earth as the waters cover the sea so by serving Elohim in a rational manner, we are only capable of connecting and receiving from Eloheka, the divine name Elohim, which refers to godliness that is contracted within intellect and nature. By serving God in a super rational manner, we are capable of connecting and receiving from Havaya, Yote Wauhe, God's ineffable name, where past, present and future are as one. God's essence, however, cannot be obtained through this form of service, for even the loftiest levels are not suitable vessels for God's essence. It is specifically through our service in the lowest levels, working and refining the physical world down to and including the Egyptian language, that we are capable of receiving from and connecting to Anochi. For as the verse states regarding the Holy Temple, behold, the heavens and the heavens of heavens cannot contain you, and yet this physical house can. So this is a very powerful word. I wasn't going to show you that this the, the three verses. I'll go try and find the three verses where you've got anarchy because I did a lesson on this one of the verses. You'll see it just in a minute. Go look at the verse because it's the verse I am that I I am the savior. There's no savior beside me. Let me just have a look. Okay, just quickly flick this up. I weren't intending to, but these are the three three verses where you've got this anarchy anarchy together. And we looked at that image of the Aleph and then flipped up above that the mirror image was another image of the aleph haven't we and we said that the top aleph represents the yod and the hair and what's in between the yod and the hair da'af knowledge so you've got wisdom knowledge and understanding that's the upper masculine of the name yod hair wow hair the lower the upper hair, the upper divine feminine, which is understanding, which is Bina, which is the level of the Jubilee, which is the level of repentance. Okay. They're the upper, which is called understanding, the, the divine mother, the level of the throne, all kinds of things. There's all kinds of wonderful mysteries, but it says the Yod and the hair are always together. And this is why sometimes you've got the name Yah in the Torah because they never separate. The problem is with the lower masculine and feminine, there's sometimes a division between and that's our work to bring unity between heaven and earth and that's accomplished through Mashiach ben Yosef. That's accomplished through yes or that unity. Just like the above letter Aleph, there's the wisdom and then the understanding and in between that there's what's called the Ath, knowledge. So you've got that whole concept of Chabad, Hochma, Bina, Da'ath in between. So below we've got Tifereth, Malkuth, we've got um, the letter Vav and the letter He and Mashiach ben Yosef in between. Okay, it's exactly the same and we've got to mirror that unity above, below. So we've got this word Anachi, Anachi, so we can see there's two Alephs together. Just as we've got the Aleph below that represents the unity of yod heh wow -He below, uniting heaven and earth below. And then we've got the pattern above, the letter yod heh above us, that we imitate, that's also the letter Aleph. So Anachi, Anachi, two Alephs together. Anachi, Anachi, yod heh wow -He, we en mi bal adai uh, moshi a. I, I am the Lord and besides me there is no saviour. So that's a very important verse and I've done teachings on that. You can go look at the videos, no saviour beside me and it will go out absolutely, totally and utterly pointing to the fact that that verse, the saviour, the way that yod heh wow manifests his salvation in this world is through Yeshua. That verse, when you analyse it, it points to Yeshua and nobody else, the whole concept of Mashiach, the whole concept of Yosef. Okay, the whole concept of the suffering servant, it points to hit, to Yeshua. There's, the, he, there is no saviour, but yod heh wow -He is true. But that saviour has been, that salvation has been revealed and made manifest through Yeshua, the concept of Mashiach ben, 
Ben Yosef. So I, I am the Lord, and beside me there is no saviour. And then the next verse in which you got the two anachis together, I, yea, I erase your transgressions for my sake, and your sins I will not remember. So this goes back to the healing that we will receive from grace, not because we've attained it or become worthy of it, but because Yodhe Wawi desires to bring us to that place of rectification. He desires to bring us to that place of repentance. It's his will to be so is good upon us and his will cannot be defeated even no matter how evil we have become because we've been given a great work to do. To go and descend into the abomination of the earth, Egypt, is no small task. We've been, t we've been given a very, very, very tough challenge. A, t a challenge where we've gone into all the dark corners of the world in order to bring this light. And it's not been easy because we've been doing it during Edomite exile when Rome dominates. And this has a certain, it flavours up the whole, um, it flavours up the whole message. And um, it's been very, very difficult. And if it weren't for the fact that yod he wow he desires to bring us with that perfect, place of perfection and he desires to bring us to that place of repentance and it won't happen how we imagine it's going to happen it definitely won't it's happened in a way which is con has, has made us all guilty of lashon hara we are all completely com covering leprosy and because of that we're now clean okay it's yod he wow it's not about us and then it says the final one is yeah i yeah i am he who consoles you who are you that you fear man? Who will die? And the son of man, who will be made as grass? And this is saying, you, who are you? The daughter of the righteous like you and full of many merits. Why should you fear men whose end is to die? So it's really, these are very, very significant messages. Here, look, look how the sages call it the daughter of righteousness. We are here trying to rectify um, the fallen divine feminine it's the divine aspect of femininity that really fell um, and needs rectifying and uniting back up to the divine masculine that's the letter vav that's our work to do to bring unity between the um, letter vav and the letter here because it's sorry the letter vav and the lower letter here because that is where the separation has occurred and that is where the repair has got to take place. And we are repairing from below. And we've been sent into this world in order to accomplish some of that repair. So there is unity between that vav and that hair. Okay, so all this is all interesting stuff. So now you've got the three verses where you've got anachi, anachi. And you can see how that's the upper vav, the upper um, the upper aleph and the lower aleph. Or the yod hair and the vav hair. And together, when the sages say this as well, there's a few times where the names of somebody is repeated. So this is a name of Yote Wawi repeated. And this is indicating to you there's a lower reality and upper reality because it's like when Avraham was going to slaughter Yitzchak, it shouted, Avraham, Avraham. They didn't just shout to Avraham below, they shouted also to his upper soul to get him to stop doing it. Because we've all got a lower reality and an upper reality. We've got to be we've got to be unity between our upper reality and our lower reality. And this is exactly what this is saying. So there's loads of times where you've got this repetition of the names. And you've got like Noach is repeated, and you've also got Yaakov is repeated, and you've like I say, you've got Avraham, and there's instances where these names are repeated and you've got them together. And like I say, the sages say that's our lower being and our upper soul. Um, you know, sometimes you've got to be able to speak at both to both levels, the upper person and the lower person. But you've also got to bring unity between the upper person and the lower person. OK, you have to stay connected to your upper self. OK, and sometimes it's our upper self that's communicating with us. And we can feel that divine inspiration coming from even an aspect of our upper soul. So we've all got this lower being and upper being. And we should really bring unity between those, if at all possible. So it's not coincidental that we've got this. Anachi, anachi. That's what I'm trying to drill home. And I showed you that image of the upper aleph and the lower aleph. We've got, we're striving for unity. We don't want to see staff and stick. 
we'd, sorry, we don't want to see the staff and the serpent anymore. We don't want to see two things. We just want to see one, the letter Aleph, yod he wow -in, nothing else beside him. That's our healing. That's the tree of life. And when we see the serpent and we see the staff and we're seeing them as something separate, then we've still got that consciousness. That's good. That's evil. We've still, we've seen two things, not one. Okay, and the two things are the consequence of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, eating from that fruit. Okay, only because it's so important. I'm real. I'm so waiting to get the next um, to the next slides. I don't think I'm going to be able to cover it all in this one particular lesson, but just to show you how important this word is, look at the numbers. The square ordinal is eight hundred and thirty-six, which we can see, and the heat on its own is this part. That's what's that saying? That's the lower vav and hair, isn't it? The lower vav and hair and the he, where we've got to create unity between the son and his bride. And you've got yod, hair above the father and the mother. Uh, your, you know, like um, yod, hair, wawi, and the ruach hakodesh, the Holy Spirit. Okay, look at this end. The square ordinal is 836. The actual regular of Anachi, Anachi is um, 162. I will point out at this point, just wait a minute, um, Anachi on its own is 81. Um, and 81 is a filling out of Moshe. I come across that number all the time. One of the ordinal fillings out of Moshe comes to 81 and it comes out all the time. So Anachi on its own comes to 81. We know that Moshe... 100% is connected to this whole concept here and the heat. Why? Well, Moshe was raised as an Egyptian. You know, he was raised in Egypt and to bring the B'nai Israel out of Egypt. And then he's left with the job of suffering in exile in order to rectify the Eriv Rav, the mixed multitude that was um, that had, had, had left the ch with the children of Israel, the Egyptians that left, or that really were a mixed mixed multitude. So many nations that had descended into Egypt um, and dwelt there. Moshe brought them out with the children of Israel, and then they were created the golden calf. And but now he's suffering in exile in order to rectify the holiness that's trapped within those um, Erev Rav sparks, the mixed multitude. Yeshua is doing the same thing. Okay, so it's all connected to this concept of descending into Egypt in order to refine um, the lowest aspects of, of, of creation. That's the whole purpose of Moshiach. So the fact that 662 is 2 times 81, Anachi is 81, and Moshe, the filling out was Moshe, the ordinal, one of the ordinal fillings out of Moshe is 81. And like I say, I come across that all the time. Let it look. Uh, oh, it's not gone to the wrong one. Okay, I'm not going to go through this extensively and I've just left it on there if you want to stop and read and pause it. But the 998 from Anachi, it's related all to all these concepts. Look, and Pharaoh named Yosef Sathanach Paneach two times 998. Okay, we've also got the concept to be found within the book called Hatar, the 999 footsteps below that we must accomplish, and that thousandth one is the act of grace that comes from above, which is the revelation of Mashiach ben Dawid. So Mashiach ben Yosef has got to accomplish 999 footsteps, sorry, 999 footsteps below, and like I said, the last one, the thousandth footstep, the Aleph Gadol, the big Aleph, is a, is a given as, a, as grace below, okay? So it's 998 plus 1, which is a kalel, isn't it? Representing the hidden way in which yod Wahweh works in this world to accomplish his will. He accomplishes a lot through Yosef, Sathanach Paneach. That's his Egyptian name. And Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, named Yosef, Zathanath Paneach. So there's all kinds of hidden, wonderful stuff there. 1,996, which is two times... Uh, 998 the tree of life it's chayim okay it's got a regular and ordinal comes to 303 then it's got a mispah gadol regular and ordinal comes to 1693 add them together it comes to 1996 two times 998 connected back to anachi anachi okay the tree of the life the torah where was it given 
in the desert of Sinai, which is, is part of Egypt. It's the, it's it's well, it is now, but it's it's a, it was no man's land basically on the outskirts of Egypt. Any creature that goes on its belly, this is talking about the serpent. You're not allowed to eat it. However, I've taught, did a whole lesson about Moshe being buried in the Gachon, that letter uh, vav of the word Gachon. I ain't got time to go through it now, but any creature that goes on its belly, it's all mystical, basically it's telling you he's, he's buried in Yerushalayim, but it's all in the very coded message, and I went through that in previous teachings. 1,996, all related. And Pharaoh was dreaming, and behold, he was standing by the Nile. So this was the initiation of Yosef into the viceroy of, e of Pharaoh in Egypt, isn't it? Pharaoh had a dream. And this bit here, the regular and ordinal, 1,196, and 59 so we see it's linked up to here and pharaoh named him yosef zathanath paneach okay so this whole dream interpretation you've got to interpret reality in a very positive way it's part of the actual redemption process just as yosef was able to interpret pharaoh's dream for him that caused pharaoh a great amount of distress there's a lot of wisdom in that okay 19 times 61 so we had that verse, didn't we? Um, just as Moshe lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And it came to 19 times 157. 157 being Nukva, which means the divine female. Okay? It means female. Nukva means female. It's also the name given for Malkuth. Okay? It's a very um, important name. However, we've got, it was Chava times Nukva unrectified eve times the whole concept of the divine female here we've got chava times 61 what's 61 61 is the name ani rather than anochi so 61 is the name of malkuth the name given to malkuth the holy name ani is given to malkuth the rectified divine female so we've get again got a connection between that what we saw with the serpent uh, from john 3 14 I hope you're with me with that one. Connected back to and Pharaoh named Joseph, Safnath Paneach, and um, this. And also here, look, we've got Sinai and we've got Sulam. Okay, there's exactly the same regular gematria. So Sinai is where the mountain which they received the Torah upon, and Sulam is the ladder we are got to get from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain. Okay, so this is the Sulam ladder between heaven and earth that we've got to ascend. Okay, and this is it's connected to the whole concept of Yesod. As we can see here, however, 538, which is the square ordinal of um, Sulam, I do believe, and 621, which is the square ordinal of Sinai, add them together, 1159, Zathanath Paneach. And this as well, behold, he was dreaming. So this whole concept, the whole concept of the giving of the Torah is connected to the Torah of Moshe. The, the, sorry, it's connected to the Torah of Moshe, which is one with the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef. You know, feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, comfort the widow and the orphan, visit the prisoner. All these things that we need to be humble in order to accomplish. This is the true Torah. We need to be very humble. That's why we've got been all been given leprosy. Now it's a level playing field. You don't need to be occupied with your own righteousness because there's only there's only Yeshua who's truly righteous. Don't need to be occupied with that anymore. Just attach to his reality and let his life be within you. Okay? You need to be humble in order to receive that. Um, 913, which is Bereshith, isn't it? Where have I got that from? Um... All right, so the Mispagadol of Sulam is 743. The regular and ordinal of Sulam is 170. If we add those two together, they come to 913. 913 is the word Bereshith. Okay, so Sulam is connected to Bereshith in the beginning, which is very important. And then 800 comes from um, the square ordinal plus the regular and ordinal of Sinai. Okay, so add them together, 1,713, which is exactly the same as sun and year. Um, the square ordinal, sorry, of sun and year. Sun represents Mashiach ben Yosef, and the sun is connected to the cycle of the year, the Shana. So that's 355. 
355 is also the gematria of Pharaoh. It's also 5 times 71. Yona, the sign that uh, Mashiach ben Yosef gave to a wicked and adulterous generation. And it's also the three words to describe the sun in Genesis. The lunar that is big in the day. Hameor agadol yom. Okay. And that's the luminary that is big in the day. He's talking about the sun. It, those three words together come to 355. That's related to the cycle of the year. That's related to the sun. King David is related to the cycle of the moon. Okay, so his, the name, so we've come across that, Lords, haven't we? Where 496, which is exactly the same as Malkuth, is the exact gematria of the three words to describe the moon, which is ha meor, the luminary, ha katan, that is small, ha laila, at night. And that comes to the exact gematria, it points to Mashiach ben David because it is, um, the exact gematria is, re he was ready with beautiful, ruddy with beautiful appearance to describe King David. But we can see these two here are connected to this unity and we can see how it's connected all back to Yosef. Okay, the light of Mashiach ben Yosef, the regular and, the regular and ordinal come to 998, anachi, anachi. Yaakov rectified, so this is the square ordinal of Yaakov rectified, when he has the truth, Lord Yosef Chai, the additional letter Vav within him, that represents Yosef, that's the regular of Yaakov rectified, and that's the ordinal of Yaakov rectified, which is 53, which is the exact same ordinal as Yeshua, add them all up together, 998, all these things, their name, Shemom, this is talking about um, and he called their name Adam so unity between the male and the female he created them male and female and he called their name Adam okay so that's where we're heading out with Shimon okay go look at that Genesis 5 2 and you'll see what I'm talking about it's got a Miss Bagadol 914 and 58 so it's all connected bringing unity rectifying um, Adam and Eve back together as one that's our work to do. It's all accomplished through Mashiach ben Yosef. Shepherd. We're waiting for the final shepherd, aren't we? The shepherd David to come, 998. It's all uniting all the concepts of the shepherd of Israel together as one. The one good shepherd is Yeshua, who will come again, though, in capacity as Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David. And then my covenant of peace, Berit is Shalom. 998, it's got an ordinal of 116. 116 is the ordinal of Mashiach ben Yosef. So Mashiach ben Yosef, ordinal comes to 116, regular comes to 566. And then you've got this. And Yodhe Wawi Elohim built that side that he had taken from man into a woman. And he brought her to man. Genesis 2.22 1996 so we can see that's connected all the way back to all those concepts it's utterly and absolutely incredible and also this look um there's loads of numbers i can't go through it all now but basically 311 is man ish and um, so we know that man contains both aspects of female and male and we are made as one new man through the concept of Mashiach ben Yose. So all that is connected to Anachi, Anachi. Right, so this is it back. So we can see the 998 that we've just gone over. The square ordinal plus the regular comes to 998. So it's connected to all that massive concept. It's not a small thing. We're not going to be able to get through everything that I wanted to. Look at this though, however. Taharath, leprosy. Is exactly the same gematria as anachi, anachi. I am. I, I am. Okay? So, you saw those three verses that we looked at, didn't you? Only I'm the saviour. I'm going to forgive in all your sins. And he's going to bring us to repentance for the, for the sake of his name. So, all those things, what are they linked to? They're linked to leprosy. Who is, who is the leprous Mashiach? It's, it's only a code name. He's not really got leprosy. What he's basically mean he's been, he's been treated like a leper. He should have been. It's us that's basically had the leprosy, 
and he's been treated like a leper and he's been suffering like a leper in this exile with us until we have done everything that we can below in order to bring that unity between heaven and earth and to create a fit dwelling place for your hey Wawa to dwell on earth as it does in heaven. Okay? And it's all been done in a very concealed and hidden way to maintain free choice ultimately. Because God does not, yod he -Wow does not force himself on people. He doesn't say, here I am, this is me, eat it. He just gently, he hides himself. You have to, you want yod he -Wow, you will have to search for him in this world. You'll have to search in all the places that you never expect to find him. Because for the most part, he's dressed up like a leper in this world. And he's where you would never expect to find him and he's all in all the lowest places. You think that you can go create your ivory towers and these massive buildings full of gold and silver and everything like that. He's not there. He's in this time, whilst we are rectifying the whole of humanity, he's in the humblest of places. He's with the poor. He, you want to meet your day while we're face to face. Do what Yeshua said. Feed the hungry. Clothe the naked. Visit the prisoner. Heal the sick. Because that's where you will meet him face to face. So he's, all, he's always in the places where you don't expect to be. Because why? Because he wants to rectify the entire of reality. Not just the high, lo he, he, not, not just the high lofty places. And that's why we've got to take this light into the lowest places. So Zaharath is exactly the same gematria. It comes to 760 and 60, 76 ordinal. Add together 836. Which is exactly the same square ordinal as leprosy which is exactly two times this whole verse just as the Moshe, Moshe lifted up the snake in the wilderness so the son of man must be lifted up so it's all connected my soul do you do you hide your countenance so this is from psalm 88 15 you'll notice that the initial letters spell um patan which is one of the names it's, it's, it's the name of the viper <laughs> basically sometimes uh, i mean it really that's the name of the viper i can't quite remember why i ended up there was a reason why i actually ended up looking for um within the tanakh evidence of the initial letters spelling out viper and i got this was one of them and i thought there you go um and it's to do with the fact that the serpent ultimately it, it hides the countenance of our Father in heaven. The whole, everything in this reality, when, even when you're looking at the Mashiach, he appears as a viper or a serpent and a chash. And it's for us to take that and transform it from a concealment into a revelation. That's part of our work below. To take all this darkness, to take all this evil and to transform that into the unity and absolute oneness of yod heh -Wow so that we haven't got vipers and serpents that bite us. We've got something that we know with absolute conviction that we can say there is only yod heh -Wow and nothing else beside him. And even this experience that is bitter and suffering on our part, we know ultimately that it will be transformed into a revelation of his unity and nothing else beside him. So sometimes we suffer that, we suffer that in between period, don't we, where it looks like he's hidden his face from us. Okay, and that's very much connected to a serpent like or a viper experience, isn't it? But like I say, the Torah was given in the place of snake. It says it was given in the place of snakes, serpents, and scorpions. Sorry, vipers, snakes, and scorpions. For that reason, we have got to transform that that appears as something other than your Tewawe into a revelation of him himself. We've just not got to create, we've not got to keep the situation, oh, this is a serpent and this is a staff, this is negative and this is good. We've got to say it's all him anyway. Whatever happens, it's, there's only him, nothing else beside him. So we can see that's connected also to that. There's probably a whole load of other mysteries in there. I can't quite recall why I looked into it, uh, but I know it were very profound at the time. I might have to bring... Um, might have to do a separate teaching on that. But as we can see, it's all connected. You can go and look at Psalm 88 as well. That's a wonderful psalm to, to look at and comprehend. Then we've got this here. These are Moshe and Yeshua united together. These are the ordinals of Moshe and um, 
These are the ordinals, but they are the mispagadol ordinals um, when you take into consideration the sophite letters. Okay, so these are the ordinals when you take into consideration all the sophite letters of the spelling out of Moshe and the spelling out of Yeshua, the Yod, Shin, Vav, Ayin. This is the level of Malkuth when they're spelled out at the level of Malkuth. And then this is Moshe and Yeshua spelled out at the level of Yetzirah. Moshe and Yeshua spelled out at the level of Bina. And Moshe and Yeshua spelled out at the level of Atsilun. So if you add all of Moshe's numbers up, what does it come to? 418. One of the Anachis. Okay. Moshe is an embryo. Um, he's the Moshiach of Yote Wow here. <coughs> and he incarnated again as Yeshua. A much higher level of the soul of the Mashiach. There's only one Mashiach. He came the first in his first capacity as Moshe at the level of Moshe within the letter of the Lara. He came again. Mashiach was revealed again in Yeshua at a much higher level. He will be revealed the final time in David, King David. And then you've got um, so Moshe connected to Anachi. That's absolutely totally one. That's telling us who is Moshe? Moshe is Yeshua. Just as Moshe lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted out. Exactly the same number, 418. 418. Okay. They, one of the same, they are the same. There's no question about it. Moshe and Yeshua are the, is Mashiach. And when he comes again, it was the same soul of Mashiach. And we're all a part of it. That's what's so wonderful. Um, let's have a look at this name. For you long for your father's house. Um, let's see. I can't see what it's going to... Oh, it's 859, isn't it? 869. So this is Levan speaking to Yaakov. For you long for your father's house. He longed for the house of Yote Wawi to be built on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, but it's also his, his father's house, i.e. the land of Israel. He'd been dwelling with Levan until he got his brides. He had to take his bride from this swindler, Levan, and he suffered all that he had to suffer. And this is like Yeshua coming for his bride, isn't it? So Rebecca represents the divine female, the lower divine hair, and um, Leah represents the upper hair. And he had to bring them both out and... Um, you know, and Ra Raquel is what's called the Nukva, going back to that whole concept of the divine feminine. Deva Re Rebecca really represents that um, letter here of the name yod here while we've talked about it a lot. So there's all kinds of wonderful things that are linked to this race for you longed for your father's house. Okay, we've got here some numbers um, that I just wanted to highlight. You've got the regular plus the Mispagadol, if you add those two together, down here come to 3,860, which is 10 times Yeshua. He longed for Yeshua. He longed for Yosef, because he knew through Yosef, heaven and earth would be united. That is like Yaakov and Rachel united together. Yaakov represents the Vav. Rachel represents the hair. She's the house of God below. Okay. And then in between them, who is in between Rachel and Yaakov? Yosef. He was the son that they bore. So between them is the um, the pillar between heaven and earth. And that is um, that what is what brings the unity. But as long as Yaakov has been told the lie, Yosef is dead, um, he's not he's not invigorated. It's only when he's told the truth, or oh, oh, Yosef, hi, Yosef is still alive, he arouses him, brings him back to life. We need heaven to be brought back to life. Yaakov represents heaven. We need that flow of abundance from um, heaven to earth um, and that's diminished all the time where the truth is hidden um, you know that Yosef is being torn by wild animals uh, you know that brings a separation between heaven and earth so how is this connected up here you've got the 418 which is the regular uh, the ordinal and then you've got the Miss Pag adult ordinal 451 Adding together 869. And this phrase here, we've got the regular and the ordinal. 
we've got the Miss Packard, all red, gilla and Ardell. Add them together, 4,355, four which is 5 times 869. So we know the longing for his father's house is going to be accomplished through this here, just as Moshe lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. What is it accomplishing, this lifting up? Unity between heaven and earth. Unity between the Vav and the hair, Unity between Yaakov and Rachel and that unity between that unity between heaven and earth is Yesod which is Yosef which is Yeshua because well, we can see it's Yeshua 386 is Yeshua so 10 times Yeshua and 5 times Yeshua lifted up as a suffering servant and everything that that's connected to the rising of the dawn that should be Shekhar Allah ok I'll just correct it Okay, so the rising of the dawn, Shachar Allah. This is actually, Shachar is the same letters as Sarach. So she was the, Sarach was the woman that taught, showed Moshe where the bones of Yosef was. She's the wise woman, the peaceful and faithful woman. Um, Shachar Allah. And this Allah here is the rising, it's very much associated with King David. It's a verb associated with King David. He will arise. Um, 1330 is connected to this for you long for your father's house and also 133 is the regular and ordinal of Segula it's the name in Midrash that she, she, um, Sarach Bat Asher is given so it's 98 plus 41 I do believe um, comes to 133 and um, let me just think if that's right it's, anyway, it's, it's definitely the regular and ordinal of um, Segula. And build it up in the days of Yor. So this is what we want in that, the, the, you know, the fallen sucker of David rebuilt up as in the days of Yor. And that comes to 869. Okay. Okay, just to bring you up this actual verse. On that day I will rise up the fallen tabernacle of David and I will close up their breaches and I will raise up these ruins and build it up as in the days of yore in order that they inherit the remnant of Edom and all the nations because my name is called upon them. It says yod he Huawei, who does this? Okay, so then it's a wonderful, wonderful, um, a wonderful prophecy. And so we can see how that is connected to um, what we've been looking at. Okay, so 869, that's a very important number as well, but I haven't got time to go through that. But that's connected to um, this number and everything else, long for your father's house. Know that yod Wawa is Elohim. He made us and we are his people and the flock of his pasture. And Sorry, he made us and we are his people and the flock of his pasture. Okay, so we can see that this is linked to this, right? It's also heavily linked to the concept of Leviathan, this. And this is something that we've got to overcome. Leviathan is the aspect of the serpent, if you like, that conceals the kingdom of heaven on earth from our eyes, that presents down here in this reality as duality as opposed to the unity of the name yod he wow he it's that delusion that we've got to overcome it prevents the kingdom from being established on earth it's the veil if you like or something along those lines um but it's also very much related to pharaoh who's called leviathan we're just gonna have a quick look in a minute let me just bring this last thing up because we've got to understand how it all connects to the concept of and Pharaoh and how sometimes we've got a very small exilic mind and this can hinder us in our journey of faith said the watchman morning has come and also night if you request will request request return and come so that's 3401 exactly the same as this that watchman by the way is Metatron Metatron is the slave who rules instead of the king which king the Mashiach Whilst the Mashiach is in exile, suffering with it and rectifying the whole of reality, um, to bring us to that unity of the name yod he wow he to make below a fitting vessel for that that yod he wow he desires to bestow upon us, um, we've got a guardian there instead. And most people would think that that guardian is yod he wow he They are experiencing 
the guardian as Yote Wawe. They don't actually they haven't reached the top of the ladder and seen Yote Wawe face to face with the um Yeshua Sahapani. You know, and, and the true revealed concept of the Mashiach is what is really at the top of the ladder that reveals the unity and oneness of Mashiach. Uh, sorry, the unity and oneness of Yote Wawe. So we've got this temporary situation. It's a necessary evil. I've talked about it loads in my teachings when I've gone on about Metatron. Okay, I'm 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 evolving in my understanding of Metatron. At one time, I was one hundred percent against him because I just felt like he's the he's just what you call the prince of the world. We've got to be able to reject that. Um, we've got to be able to reject the duality that he instills within us and the exiled state that that duality creates within us we've got to be able to get to a place of maturity where we are strong enough to actually reject it and not be afraid to reject it because we know that it's wrong why do we know that it's wrong because it creates a situation of duality and we are aware of the name yote wowie which is complete unity okay and there's all kinds. I've gone over this loads. It's connected to the verse which says, seek out the book of Yote Wawe that's connected to the Zohar teachings. I've done that before many, many times, so I can't go over that now. I'm very interested in going over this and then I'll have to wrap it up. I won't be able to go through um, some of the other gematria. I'll have to leave it for another lesson now um, if I get a chance to do it. Thankfully, I spoke about the things that I wanted to speak about. We're not going to get in this lesson and the Gambaccio about about him being clean, I don't think. But let's go through this. Um, let's go through this concept about Leviathan. Okay, so this is an incredible concept. This is taken from Torah portion of that era, and it's all about the 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 mentality, the exiled mentality of Pharaoh that's linked to this whole concept of Leviathan, that's part of the concept of the serpent that conceals a unity. And specifically, Leviathan is connected to the concept of Mashiach ben Dawid, is what prevents a revelation of Mashiach ben Dawid. They've got the exact gematria. Um, Malkuth is 496, Leviathan's 496. King David, when it says ruddy with um, beautiful beautiful eyes, sorry, ruddy with beautiful eyes, that comes to 496. The three words to describe the moon come to 496. So Leviathan is, is part of this concept of the serpent, the concealment that prevents us from accessing the unity until we have done sufficient work below to reveal that unity. It's all to do with battling a particular mindset. It's very complicated. It's a subtle mindset that Pharaoh has that we tend to adopt. Right, let's have a look. Let's go through this. So we bring this up. This is the 418 we've been looking at, haven't we? That connects us to the Son of Man must be lifted up, just as much lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So know that Yod Wawi is Elohim, God. There's no separation. There's no Yod Wawi and Elohim. Yod Wawi is Hel Elohim. That's everything that we experience in this world. In this creation that is associated with the name Elohim, it's all Yod Wawe. There is no separation whatsoever. He made us, and we are His people. Now, this the actually written is this is He made us, and not we ourselves. <laughs> it's put out as this, and we are His people. We'll see the commentary on it. We, we are not we ourselves, people, and the flock of His pasture. Let's go and have a look at some commentary on this because it's very fascinating. It's going to give us this whole, why we've descended into Egypt. Why would we send to the abomination of the earth? Because we've got to overcome these powers that prevent the kingdom from being revealed. We've got to go against Leviathan's thought patterns and overcome that and see, do we manifest any of this Leviathan um, thought pattern, this pharaonic thought pattern? So as the Gemara says, the great Tananim, Rabbi Yechonin said, these are the Leviathan straight snake and Leviathan twisted snake. That's from Baba Batra 74A. Rashi as well comments on the Tatanim. In the Agada, this is the Leviathan and it's made. The, the identification of the Tanim with the Leviathan sheds a deeper light on what was said above. So this is part of an overall commentary, by the way. Although we cannot delve into the topic of Leviathan in this concept, 
context of this Devar Torah, numerous sources hint that the Leviathan holds a great secret. He does hold a great, great secret. You, we crack Leviathan and we've got King David come in. It's as simple as that. God's sport with the Leviathan. This Leviathan you fashioned to sport with. Hopefully I'll do some teachings on the concept of Leviathan. But it's as I've said. It's that. It's the. We've got the, the, the Aleph. Um, sorry. You've got the upper Aleph. The upper Yud of the Aleph. The Vav and the lower uh, Aleph. So you've got aspects of the concealment. And one aspect of that's Metatron, one aspect is Metatron, and one aspect that conceals Mashiach ben Dawid is Leviathan. Okay? The Leviathan you fashion to spark with, and there's all kinds of things that you can uh, delve into that, because um, there's even sexual connotation to that, because it's the same word, I think, for when Yitzhak sport, was sporting with Rebecca, and, and Pharaoh, uh, uh, Avimelech, spotted them doing that. The great feast, he slaughtered the female and salted it for the righteous in the world to come. So that's what's written in Bava Batra 74b. These are just different aspects of Leviathan. In the future, Rabbi Yochanan said, God will make us succor for the righteous in the future from the skin of the Leviathan. So Bava Batra 75a. Let's see what else. There's also, it's also written that it will um, be the skin of Leviathan will cover the walls of Jerusalem. We think we're talking about the new Jerusalem. So there's a very significant aspect. There's something very secret and hidden in this whole concept of Leviathan. It's very, very key and critical. But what we're going to point out now is something that we've just got to get the, our, men, our mentality into. We've got to start thinking like a kid, like, Kings and daughters of the king and daughters and sons of the king rather than slaves of a slave master. We will suffice to point out that Leviathan in Gematria equals Malkuth 496. If, as the Maharal writes, Ger Arya Bereshit 121, there are creatures found in this world which, due to their importance and greatness, this world cannot accept them due to their great yet level. Yet, in the future, all will understand that yours, Hashem, is the kingdom. In contrast to the arrogant Pharaoh who says, Mine is my river and I made it myself. The Jews say, Know that Hashem, he is God. He made us and not we. We are his. Tehillim 103, which is this verse that's connected to the serpent on the cross. The written form is, and not we, and the spoken form is, and we are his. Okay, so there's, it's written one way and spoken another, like kativ, it's written, wello, instead of, we are his, wello, we are his, it's written, and not, wello, as in, and not. So, he made us and not we, basically, <laughs> we didn't make ourselves, then we are his, and them, and them we will, uh, and then we will merit to say, for Hashem is good, his kindness endures forever. That's what comes further in the verse of Psalm 100. Similarly, the Bnei Yishachar quotes that this is the song of Leviathan. I've even heard a commentary that the only psalm that will remain once Mashiach ben David is revealed is this psalm. Okay, it's that significant, and it's talking about transitioning from pharaonic ways of thinking and to uh, messianic ways of thinking mashiach levels of consciousness and it's it's simple we identify with our suffering in this edomite exile to an extent that we see that as something separate to your day while himself it creates a barrier because we've been experiencing all the um the the We've been experiencing this life to such a degree that we start to identify with the actual suffering itself. The actual vessel that we are trying to form in order to be able to receive that light that we are destined to receive, that abundance that we're destined to receive. We get so caught up in our own suffering that, and our experience of evil that we somehow think that 
it's, it, that's who we are and we have done this. We forget that we are being made. There's a purpose in this that we didn't make ourselves. We are being formed so that we will ultimately fit be a fitting vessel, a fitting house to that will be able to contain that that yod here, wow here, who is the divine masculine desires to bestow upon us. And this is the concept again about the right order between the divine female and the divine masculine. The male was created first. And this is something we have got to simply understand. It's like when Yeshua said, I was made for, this, he said, when he was questioned about the Shabbat, he said, the Shabbat was made for me, not me for the Shabbat. This is saying the divine masculine is made first. The vessel, the Shabbat, the kingdom, is made to fit me. The vessel is made for the light, not the light for the vessel. So we've got to get things in the right order. The divine masculine comes first. This is very beneficial for us. We didn't make ourselves. We are made to fit something glorious. So as much as we identify so solidly with this exiled experience, and it's so real to us as if it's something that we're a part of that, um, <coughs> that is who we are. That in and of itself, that whole experience that we've been enduring, and we think that this is in and of itself somehow that from a pharaonic point of view, when you're still trapped in, the, in exile, you're still identifying with yourself as this all, this, this, you're still strongly attached to ideas that this suffering is somehow who you are. We are not this. this there's a purpose in this that we've got to let go of in order to be able to receive that that we purpose to receive. And, and that transitions us from that exilic mind that forms, that's part of the way that yod heh has formed the vessel, into that that's then perfected to be able to receive it. Um, that's the best way that I can put it. You've got to understand, the man came before the woman. We are being created to fit perfectly a wonderful wonderful for for purposes of wonderful wonderful unity of the entire divine name yote wow okay and sometimes um when we've got a misunderstanding of yote wow because we've got a misunderstanding of the concept of the mashiach because we're still seeing a serpent on a staff and we're not seeing the absolute perfection and sovereignty and unity and oneness of Yote Wawe, uh, even in the evil that we are experiencing, because we are still thinking in terms of good and bad, um, it creates a separation that doesn't allow us to be a fitting vessel to actually fill with the very thing that he desires to reveal to us his oneness and his unity and his love and his kindness and everything else that's associated with his name it creates that separation that Mashiach has um, been trying to rectify okay we've got to overcome that we've got to let go of identifying through that suffering and instead turn towards the name yod heh wow and just have that absolute faith that all this has been for an ultimate purpose because yod heh wow -He knows himself and he knows what vessel is uh, need is required in order to be perfectly one with him and he has come up with a perfect way to bring um, the divine masculine and the divine feminine together okay and as much as we might be resisting that whole process because it feels like it's an unbearable amount of suffering to go through you've got to have that trust that he knows what he's doing he was made first and we are not he has not got to fit into our little crushed restricted vessels we have got to realize that we have been made to be filled with the light of his name and nothing else beside him so it's not it's not what it's not for us to cling to our experience of being this going through this suffering in of of itself this exile this pharaonic way of thinking we've got to let go of that 
You've got to let go of that whole experience of the serpent and the staff. You know, the good and the bad, the reward and the punishment. Uh, okay. We've got to let go of that to, to remember that we're here for a purpose of unity. And as long as we are identifying with a suffering, it's as if we are saying we made ourselves. This suffering is what I am. It's not. It's not, not the, the suffering is not who you are. You are being prepared to receive oneness. You've got to let go of that in order to experience that oneness. You've got to let go of the identity that this suffering in and of itself creates within us. This exiled mind where we're still not fully attached to the unity, the experience of the unity of the name yod heh -Wah And that suffering is so real. It really makes us feel that that is what we are and we are not. We are not that experience. We, we are um, being made for something that already exists and we are being perfectly formed in order to be his perfect uh, mate, if you like. His divine opposite, his divine feminine, his house on earth that he desires to fill with his glory. So that's what we're trying to attain. And as long as we are clung in, you know, to a separate idea that this is who we are and all this suffering, all this bitterness of exile, and, and then we, we, you know, and all that. And when we, when we cling to that serpent mentality, that pharaonic mentality, that exile mentality, we can't let go of it. It's so real to us. It defines us to such a degree. We can't let go of it in order to be that that we are actually made to be able to receive the name yod heh wow -He. And that force that keeps us from opening ourselves up and turning towards the king of the kings of kings and receiving that that he desires to be stored on us is somehow connected to the concept of Leviathan. You know, and we've got to let go of it. We want unity, we've got to let go of it. And that is really letting go of all that um, we identify with exile, with the serpent bite, with the poison, with the toxin, with the crawling around on our bellies, with the eating the dirt, with the fall, with the separation, with the loneliness that that separation creates because we really don't feel connected to the divine masculine and all that that's associated with. We've got to let go and turn from it, however real it feels to us, that experience of suffering and however much it tries to define who we are we are not it okay we are not all that pain and we're not all that suffering and we're not all that illness and we're not all they're just a means to an end a test if you like are we going to define ourselves by those terms of exile or are we going to see that are we going to define ourselves by the name of yod heh -Wah -Wah? We did not make ourselves. He made us um, people and the flock of his pasture. Know that yod heh -Wah -Wah is Elohim. He made us and not we. Okay? We didn't make us and if he made us, it's all good. It's for an ultimate good. And that experience is only to ultimately reveal his glory in the end. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I'd wanted to go through the whole um, verse in uh, Leviticus, which talked about being covered in leprosy. But if I go on any longer, I won't. So I'll, I'll, it'll just take it too long. So I'm going to have to do a part two. Um, but anyway, I hope, I hope you've enjoyed this. And with that, I will say shalom. Oh. Please subscribe.